Hello Sagittarius, welcome to your weekly reading with me, Cindy. I decided at some point I better start. <laughs> I turned the camera on and I'm looking at my schedule and my day timer for like keeping track of getting the readings done and everything. And I looked at my schedule and I'm like, I'm not gonna have any, like I've got nothing to do tomorrow, which is Sunday for me because I'm pre-recording stuff. I always do that to get it up in time and organized. And, um, but then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, like it's just busy again the rest of the week for me getting the pre-recordings for when I'm on my second week of vacation up north. And I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, what am I going to do? I'm going to have like a day. <laughs> uh oh, I have to do laundry and I should maybe clean the bathroom. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah, so sad. <laughs> I hope your life is more interesting than mine. Uh, all right what's your story Sag what's your story you're letting me shuffle here I really like that it's like I've got you all entranced with my I have a day off I'm gonna do laundry I'm gonna clean the bathrooms one two three four five six It's an awful lot of major arcana. You got some stuff going on. Well, at least you're busy. You got things going on. Oh, the five of wands at the bottom. You're struggling though, aren't we all? You're struggling. Fighting through something, working through something. Trying to, you know, it's also like a competitive thing. Like even competing with yourself on something or trying to do something. You're struggling. There's some sort of struggle here underlying through everything. Ah, oh, you've got the king of swords. This is interesting. Interesting combinations. The King of Swords and the Hermit. This is like two cranky old men. <laughs> well, the Hermit's not so cranky. Really, he's not cranky. I don't know. The King of Swords, he's a little cranky. This is the kind of guy, like, if he was my boss, I would be totally intimidated to ask this guy for a race. <laughs> it's just like, I think I already know the answer before walk through the door with that guy <laughs> he's yeah mm. but the hermit's approaching isn't that interesting and the hermit's got some balls man <laughs> because the hermit's approach it looks like the hermit is approaching this king of swords but isn't that just like the the you know this is somebody in their very humble humble energy uh they're fine you know the king of swords isn't gonna say or do anything to them that's gonna affect because this is a very humble energy i don't know if it's two energies within you perhaps going back and forth from being a little bit defensive holding your ground on something um just looking for the facts man just the facts <laughs> Like, if you're coming in here to ask me for a raise, tell me exactly why. Why? And all I want to know are numbers. Because that's all I work with. Like, it's kind of like, okay. I made everyone feel good about themselves this week. No. Like, that's the king of swords. So, and the hermit's approaching this energy. I'm going to clarify. That'll be interesting to clarify. And then these two are much more fun. <laughs> These two are much more fun. The Fool and the Magician. And look at you. You got this in the right order. Zero to one. Zero to one. Taking the first leap here into manifesting something. Kind of taking a leap of faith to manifest something, huh? Taking a leap of faith to manifest something. Maybe you are. Maybe this is you approaching, like, a more defensive aspect of yourself right now. Um, and trying to get that sword down, trying to drop the sword and pick up that candle, pick up that lantern and sort of light your way in a much more, um, from a much more deeper place than from up here, <laughs> from a much more deeper place. Because if you do like, this is nice, the fool and the magician, just taking a leap of faith to manifest this. Taking a leap of faith too, a little bit towards... Energy that could be unpredictable because the, the magician is unpredictable energy. Now I'm here and now I'm not. Now I'm here and now I'm not. Like, you know, you can get that with the magician too. Mm -hmm. And then you have the page of swords and the wheel of fortune. That's interesting. The page of swords and the wheel of fortune. It's a little bit like 
trying to go into a new cycle where you're feeling younger and more rejuvenated here. I'll bet you, I'll bet you anything, these are like similar swords in size. I bet you they're similar swords in size. But this guy, he's probably pretty big, the old, old guy, and this is a younger feminine energy. So she's probably a lot smaller than him. And it's kind of like learning how to hold that sword again, learning how to hold your truth um, again, but in a new way with this Wheel of Fortune, like in, in some sort of a new karmic cycle, trying to hold that sword again. Learning, understanding. I don't have to clarify these because they still have those big ass swords. It's like a king of swords up against the page of swords here. There needs to be a change in the energy. The king of swords, just the king of swords. Well, the king of swords is not showing. The king of swords is sad. The king of swords. So we have the queen of cups to the five of cups. The King of Swords has a lot, had, I don't know what happened here, a lot of feelings and emotions and even like mutual love, something here. And it turned into like just what feels like a missed opportunity. It feels like it didn't, it didn't work out. And maybe this is defensive, like, you know, the King of Swords, he sits in a throne in Iceland here, kind of iced off the heart because something that had a lot of feelings and emotions Something connected to him or her that had a lot of feelings and emotions just feels like it was a disappointment. It didn't work out. It's a missed opportunity. But the hermit comes in. You know, it's kind of neat the way it is like this deeper self or someone, something. Who is this hermit? I'm kind of feeling like you're, because it's your reading, you're the being depicted as this king of swords. Like something has happened here where there was mutual love and feelings and emotions, but it didn't work out. And it's got you kind of in this, it's still a very mature energy being a king. Everything is controlled though. I mean, wow, there's, there's nothing being played here, nothing being shown at all. It's like a serious, serious poker face. You know, I said, I probably wouldn't walk into his office and ask him for a raise because I feel like I already know what the answer is going to be. But because kind of putting on that, then nobody does walk in the office because what you don't know is it's really a big softy and say, kind of think she deserve a raise, but I got a budget to run. So I can't raise you ask. It's that kind of, you know, like, because the King of Swords isn't going to divulge anything either unless you ask. At least when they're in that energy. So the Hermit. Let's get more information about this Hermit. Or there's something here. The hermit is out in the cold. The four of pentacles. The four of pentacles and the five of pentacles. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the hermit. It's like two. There's definitely two different energies here. And I want to say it could be vice versa because I've explained what the first one is. I'm going to explain what this hermit is. This hermit is someone who's kind of feeling left out here, who's feeling put out or abandoned. Um, it's like kind of a homeless. It's like a homeless feeling, uh, not part of something that you were part of at one time. And then trying to get like your stability here with the four pentacles, you know, like being put out and then just trying to get grounded again. <laughs> this is really like two difficult energies. I mean, if this is you and someone else, this is tricky, right? This is pretty tricky. Where the hermit walks towards the king of swords. <laughs> too late. The hermit is walking towards the king of swords. Like, just, just like, boop, boop, boop. <laughs> I feel the King of Swords is protecting. The King of Swords is protecting self. 
So if you're protecting yourself, then you are the king of swords. And the hermit is out, <laughs> is out in the cold. And like, like, yeah, the hermit wanders, right? Like the hermit is wandering kind of around, like trying to find their place again because they've been put out. But that journey kind of comes from within. Those answers kind of come from within. It's not like, you know, they've been put out into the cold. And I'm just going to walk down the street until I see a house with a light on and the door is unlocked. And then that's where I'm going. That's just like, you know, that's not coming from a deeper place. It's just, uh, I'll take this place. It looks good. So then we have the fool and the magician. So the fool. Tell us about the fool. Oh my gosh. Oh, the fool wants a lot. Good for the fool. See? But that's what the leap of faith can get you. Yeah, okay. Let's have a little talk about that. Because these two energies, well, well they, what can they get you? Well, actually, no. Let's look at Both of these people have a five. They both are in some sort of energy that needs to change. You can't stay in that. Fives are all about there's a need for change. And this is the trigger. Like, something's got to change here for both you and someone else. Someone here is in really, like disappointment, um, feeling very melancholy, focused on the disappointment. And then these two are in, the, are like in the process of feeling kind of abandoned and not part of any connection or a connection that they used to have. Feeling let down too by the way things have turned out. Because those energies, it's hard, it is hard to manifest in that. It's like your manifestations are not always the best. <laughs> that so we got the Ten of Pentacles, the Fool. Look at the Ten of Pentacles, the Queen of Pentacles, the Knight of Wands, the Chariot, and the Empress. So this Fool really wants to go. Someone wants to take a leap of faith here towards something that they really feel is like happiness and it's stability. Um, it's abundance. It's creative energy. It's very nurturing. Gosh, you've got the Queen of Pentacles and the Empress, both like depicted as very motherly energies, like Mother Earth energy here, like just like looking after, being looked after. And I like that there's this little Knight of Wands in here, like with the chariot. So there's this like movement that's almost spurred to go towards this that comes from a deeper part of feelings and emotions, but also like the drive of passion and desire. Okay, so the, full, so the magician. I'm kind of feeling like it's you and someone else going on in this story. What has the magician got going on? What's going on with the magician? Did it do one of those flippies and then not flippy? The magician, let's just say, has taken a rest. <laughs> magician has taken a rest. The magician has taken a rest. The magician is watching, though. The magician is watching but taking a rest. There you go. The magician is watching but taking a rest. So again, how you identify yourself in the Sagittarius Either, like, if you are the one who, oh, I want to say something else, too, about these manifestation practices. But if you are the one that um, is watching something or even someone and trying to learn or keep tabs on a situation or understand it better, you're also, like, I want to say not being seen, but kind of resting and recovering here. Resting and recovering, as opposed to this, this person almost seems like wanting to take a leap of faith and just see, like, they just feel like I'm just going to go. And I really, I just feel the universe is calling to me that there's all this abundance and happiness and nurturing energy waiting to catch me off this cliff. Like, so... Are you? Oh, yeah. So I want to say, though, like the Fool is the Aries card in the deck. It's interesting. This is the Aries card in the deck. And then this is Gemini energy. So these are both manifestations, uh, abilities to manifest. And the Fool, 
being Aries energy is just doing it. I'm just going to go. I'm just going to see what the heck happens. And nine times out of ten, you get it. Like, you really do. <laughs> just learn all being an Aries, I can tell you, you get it. Like it's, you're gonna set yourself up for disappointment once in a while because you just won't get it. But I don't know how many times, like I wanted that job, so I phoned. Not doing interviews right now, I'm gonna phone you tomorrow. <laughs> I'm gonna phone, 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 phone. And you're gonna know how much I want it. <laughs> and then you get it, like, you know. But there does come a point where you're like, okay, <laughs> I'm done trying that one. Um, but the magician, see now this is, this is, almost like a more advanced form of manifestation where this is realizing that you have all the tools at your disposal to bring in anything that you want in life this is kind of like playing this is like playing with the energy of the universe okay again I'm trying to get you to see who you are in this story because it's you and someone else the fool is like playing with the energy of the universe it's playful manifestation Let's see what happens when we mix mixed sand and water. Oh, good. We've got mud. And now what can we do with that, right? Like, and then the magician is a little more advanced in that where the magician is saying, okay, I know what mixing sand and water will give me, but I also know that when I leave things out in the sun, they kind of dry up and they harden. So I'm like, it's kind of incorporating all these things and using it maybe a more thoughtful approach for manifestation <laughs> i'm really putting my tribe down right now there you go okay the page of swords so the page of swords the page of swords the page of swords my gosh the hierophant this hierophant has been feeling heavy lately well, at least today while i'm doing this <sighs> deeper spiritual connection here you know and they get the page of swords here with the magician as well this can also be like learning someone is trying to watch and learn more about their own spiritual connection here their own sp spiritual journey if this is someone that you're dealing with and they seem to be in sort of a you know not reachable you're not seeing this person part of the the healing that they're going through is understanding their own deeper spiritual journey here what is why am i here what why am i really here everything that i've done so far in life up to this point what why was i doing it who did it benefit how did it benefit them did it hurt anyone in the process how did it hurt them and like just trying to look for deeper meaning and things that they've done and who they are and with the Wheel of Fortune, the Wheel of Fortune. Wow, that's a big shift. The Sun, the Four of Cups, and the Nine of Cups. Ah, that's interesting. I like this. Because the Wheel of Fortune is, you know, usually karmic energies changing. Shifting. And this is interesting. This is going from wish fulfillment to sort of a disappointment to some. It's not the four of cups is not too far off the five of cups energy here. And then but realizing with this nine of cups, oh, I'm the one. I'm the only one that's responsible for my happiness here. I'm the only one and I'm able to manifest now in that energy, maybe even having Something that was at one time or one point a wish fulfillment becoming uh, a missed opportunity and moving that, moving this wheel of fortune and changing it into internal happiness here. Changing it into internal happiness. The Seven of Swords is walking away. Walking away. I was just watching something. Ah. Uh, on YouTube. I think it was the power of walking away, actually. And we all kind of have like our own perspectives on that. I like watching those things because it's always interesting Like you'll still receive some some sort of little grain of information. It's like, oh, yeah, and it's pretty interesting. It was a pretty interesting. There's all sorts of little ones on that. The power of walking away. I think the Seven of Swords is one of those cards that gets such a bad rap in the tarot. 
I very, very, very rarely ever seen a Seven of Swords as someone who's cheating and stealing. It's uh, usually someone needing just to go. I need to go. I need to look after myself. I need to get myself out of this situation. Kind of feels like that. There's something going on. Because there's some two heavy energies over there. A final message to Sagittarius from the Archangel deck. Oh, look at this. Remember who you are. Archangel Michael. You are a powerful, loving, and creative child of God. You are very loved. Ooh, that's an interesting card to pull here, huh? Because there is definitely some internal work going on. There's definitely some internal work going on here, Sagittarius. I don't know why I was called to look at the bottom. I haven't done that. Teaching and learning. Archangel Zachiel. Keep an open mind and learn new ideas. Then teach these ideas to others. This card was actually coming out quite a bit earlier on in the week, which is funny. So this is a time, too, for you to learn about things. If there's experiences that you're going through, it's kind of like the universe saying, hey, we're putting you through it because you're going to actually teach or help other people down the road through these experiences. I know, right? <laughs> so there you go. Thank you so much, Sagittarius. Until next time, do be gentle with yourselves. Bye.